G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Uh, just a little quick one today, sort of discussing the uh, the recent news that was dropped yesterday, uh, I think from John Ralph, that suggested the AFL are considering uh, employing a mid-season trade period as early as next year in 2024. So today's video, I just want to talk about what that might look like and how that's going to work, and I guess my general thoughts on it, and I'd be interested in your thoughts in the comments section below as well. Before we get into it, if you do me a favor, um, according to my analytics, it looks like about 45% of uh, people who watch my channel are not actually subscribed to True Footy. So if you could do me a favor, if you are enjoying the content, it would help me a lot if you did hit subscribe. It helps me out in the algorithm, helps me grow the channel a little bit, and uh, it obviously costs you nothing. So if you are enjoying the content, uh, it would be great if we could aim to get that 45% below 40% sometime soon. So Thank you very much. So it looks like the AFL and the AFL Players Association are doing their sort of typical meetup where they discuss uh, varying needs and wants. And one of the things tabled is a potential mid-season trade period as early as next year. And there's, there's a few things they're discussing. One of them is a potential pay rise that might see AFL players get a larger share of the uh, you know the broadcasting deal that gets renewed every so often, then it's suggested that uh, players may be in line for a 30% uh, pay increase across the board. So that would be a pretty interesting concept. But we're focusing now more so on the actual potential trade period. So what we're talking about here is you know how there's a trade period at the end of the year, and it used to be trade week, and then it went to three weeks, and then I think it's uh, it's become about a week and a half in more recent times. The idea is that there would probably I'd imagine be a trade period, maybe a week uh, in the middle of the year around the buy rounds to facilitate trades between clubs and players. So what is the point of this? I suppose you could say the main function of it, a club that has potentially been you know, injury struck um, and needing to cover some depth in particular areas can actually supplement their list, not only through the mid-season draft, but actually pursuing players at existing clubs already, established players to improve their list. And what we could see happen is, let's say a team you know is competing deep in finals and they lose their Ruckman, uh, they may look at a rebuilding side who potentially don't need their Ruckman then Anymore, or is in the wrong age profile, they can try and trade, you know, a draft pick to get this player and that player would immediately come into the team, maybe not the exact following week, that would be the other things that they have to iron out. A good example of this would be, you know, Port Adelaide obviously going to be competing in the uh, in the mix for the Premiership this year, you'd think. Scott Lysett's currently got a knee injury and let's say hypothetically, touch wood, that it's uh, it's not a short term one. They may go to a club like GWS and uh, look at someone like a Kieran Briggs and offer a draft pick or whatever or potentially a player for player trade to get Kieran and Briggs over to Port Adelaide in the middle of the season so he's there for their finals campaign. That would have been the main function I would have thought of a mid-season trade period. The other possibility is you know a club had perhaps lofty expectations of playing finals this year let's say in this case perhaps Richmond but you know as things have played out they may be looking more like a rebuilding team as each week passes of this particular season so they may be looking at ways of getting in early and improving their draft hand for this upcoming draft because Richmond in this example does not have a first round draft pick so they could start negotiations early for that perhaps hypothetically and I'm not saying this would happen but you know they offer up a Jack Graham for a first round draft pick this year and I know that's not particularly realistic but I'm just trying to illustrate a point here so the benefit for clubs I suppose is that they will be armed with more information so like that example of Richmond they will know how they're performing against their expectations they've learned that in the last six months they're not really that close to competing for a premiership despite getting Taranto and Hopper not only that they've got a better handle on this upcoming draft when clubs traded picks, you know, last October, that's obviously a full 12 months out from the 2023 draft. And we've learned a lot about the upcoming prospects in this particular year. So obviously we've had, you know, the best part of more than half a season now of underage footy. Uh, the national championships are happening right now. Clubs are starting to get a more refined list of what their top 15 to 30 prospects are in the draft. Obviously there's still the draft combine to come up. But one example as well is the Gold Coast Suns who have got Jed Walter as a uh, a academy player that you know 12 months ago was probably loosely considered a top 10 prospect and now he's considered arguably second best behind Harley Reid in the draft. Now Gold Coast have a pretty good handle on the fact that Jed Walter might get bid on much earlier than they thought perhaps last October and they can put plans in place for this by trading picks and players or whatever. So that's how it's going to work and that's the likely uses of the mid-season trade period and then there's the question of do I like it? Uh, personally I've always kind of liked the idea of assembling your squad at the end of the trade period and 
draft period for a given year and having to stick to that squad throughout the next season. Yes, injuries can hit and it can be dreadful, and I know because I support the Eagles, but I sort of think that's part of the challenge of creating you know, your list and the, the, the art of list management is making sure you have depth in each position and not having to rely on trading it or even drafting it the following year. There's also some nitty gritty issues you'd have to work through you know, in terms of salary cap. You know, Let's say the Swans who are you know, hit with injuries to their talls this year uh, trade for uh, Carlton's Tom DeConing. It'd be interesting to find out uh, whose salary cap does Tom DeConing come under and let's say hypothetically Sydney take him off Carlton's hands uh, and then he goes under their salary cap. Most clubs I'm pretty sure operate fairly close to the salary cap ceiling so if they're then required to stay below the salary cap even by taking on Tom DeConey contract. That I can see being a big roadblock for a lot of trades happening mid-season. And we've talked about, you know, the benefits of a mid-season trade period to clubs, but while I'm sure there will be players out there, you know, who would look at this as a big opportunity for them, it's still quite disruptive of their lives to have to move interstate potentially uh, and find a new club in the middle of the season. And while it may be easy and workable for some, I can see that being another reason why the mid-season trade period would get overlooked unless you're talking about the desperate players. So there's a few roadblocks to work out. The uh, From the article, it suggests that the AFL is confident it can work through the salary cap issue. My concern would just be how much would the mid-season trade period actually get used considering it is difficult for players to be able to just change their employer considering they may be on the other side of the country and of course the salary cap implications. So we'll see what happens. I'm not totally against it. There is talk also bubbling away recently of you know the AFL moving towards a format where clubs could potentially trade players against their will. We do see that in other sports like like America uh, in particular, but that is kind of reliant on the fact that those athletes make a lot more money. In Australian sports, particularly AFL, the AFL Players Association has a pretty strong voice and they apparently are quite against this uh, potentially happening, but it was talked about generally in the media recently. You can imagine why, okay? These guys aren't, you know, on millions per year, or some of them are, but let's say you're a fringe 22 year old and you just get uplifted and forced to move to Tasmania from Perth or West Sydney from Victoria, it would be quite disruptive to move against your will. And the way our game is set up, the players do have a lot of power. And it would go a long way to sort of balancing that power between club and player, which at the moment it does seem like clubs are a little bit beholden to the wishes of a player. You know, they're trading them within contract now because they're afraid of players just walking out when their contract ends. I just can't see the AFL Players Association ever really getting to the point where they're willing to be traded against their will. I just don't see it happening in our game. As it happens, you know, I think the way the draft is actually structured, it wouldn't hold up if the AFL Players Association decided to take to court. I, I could be wrong, but I believe this happened in uh, in rugby and it could easily be construed as a restraint of trade when you're forcing a player to pick a particular employer. So unfortunately, the, the cards are stacked against the AFL a little bit in this case. And I would hate to move towards a future where we don't have a national draft. I think it is a good equalization measure. Sure, it's a little bit compromised now, but the alternative is still so much worse. There may be a time, you know, in the distant future where all players are on several million dollars a year, like sports in, you know, those other bigger markets across the world. And until that happens, I can't see a time where players are traded against their will. But if we did have that happen one day, it would open up a, a lot of opportunities for clubs to think more strategically about the way they trade players. One interesting uh, concept that does happen here, particularly in English soccer, that would be an interesting prospect in the AFL would be potentially loaning players. So how this works in, in football across the world, or soccer rather, sorry, I've lived in the UK for a little bit now, I'm starting to say football, is that if a player is on a, you know, a three-year deal at a given club, he can be loaned um, with his consent to another club and it may be a club within the same league or it may be another club in Europe and he spends a year potentially or six months of his contract playing at that club and the benefit would be that he gets some game time there and then he comes back a more developed player. That would be an interesting concept for the AFL in, and it would fix a few of the issues around like Sydney, for instance, uh, having their back line depleted this year, they could potentially loan Tom Barras from the Eagles because the Eagles well, that's probably a bad example. The Eagles do need Tom Barras, but they're not in a premiership window by any stretch. So an established player like that could go over, Sydney could play his salary, and then at the conclusion of that uh, loan period, he would go back to West Coast. And there's a few issues with that. First of all, there's probably the integrity side of things. You know, let's say Tom Barras gets loaned to Sydney, 
and then in round 18 they play each other. The good thing about you know European football is that they can get loaned to different countries and not actually have to play each other and I believe when teams play each other in a in a cup match or something like that that player is not allowed to play. That probably wouldn't work for the AFL but potentially we could get to a time where there's enough teams and it is potentially viable. It's an interesting concept but let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. But yeah anyway I'm rambling a little bit in this video uh, about all the different uh, trade mechanisms and loan mechanisms that could happen in the future. But the AFL is obviously moving quickly. Um, you know, it wasn't so long ago you couldn't trade future picks. Um, so the AFL is obviously making a push to be a little bit more like more advanced sports like the NBA in particular and the NFL as well. So let me know in the comments uh, what you think of a potential mid-season trade period and, you know, the loan period. Just to be clear, the trade period is the one being talked about. The loan period is just me sort of hypothesizing. But let me know in the comments what you think and, and what are some potential hypothetical deals that you think could go down um, if they were to happen in a mid-season trade period this year. As always, guys, I thank you for your support. Hope you're enjoying the content and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.